Hi, and welcome to this little uh, OpenBSD how-to. Uh, the topic of today is how to play Stardew Valley on OpenBSD. Background is that um, Stardew Valley uh, has a Linux port, uh, but it doesn't have an official OpenBSD or, or any BSD port. Uh, but we can make use of a little tool called FNIFI based on the FNA framework. So Stardew Valley is not strictly an FNA game, but it's the related mono game framework. You can uh, read more about that. I'll try to put it in the description of the video um, so that you can get some background information. Uh, anyhow, so we'll go over the steps to actually get Stardew Valley to run on OpenBSD nonetheless. Um, I think it should also work on other BSDs, uh, but I haven't gotten any positive reports yet. Would love to hear from other BSDs uh, if this can also work. Uh, I'm using the GOG version here. I'm not sure if there are any additional um, issues to be resolved with Humble Bundle or Steam versions. Um, the Steam version sometimes uh, ship with a Steamworks library that is checked for during startup of the game and sometimes the games don't run. Sometimes this can be worked around with a stub library of that um, Steamworks library. Uh, but we'll not be dealing with this here today. We'll focus on the GRG version, which does not come with any of this. So um, I'll create a new folder. Stardew, Stardew Valley, and then we're here on GOG. Uh, I'll go to my games library and find oh, not this one here. Okay, and we'll find Stardew Valley. Okay, then you go to the download section, and you wanna not download the Windows version, but the Linux version. Um, the Windows version is typically with those games actually the XNA version of the game while they convert them to FNA or in this case mono game for um, making it runnable on other platforms. So go with the Linux version. The Mac version has some other library conventions so I'm not sure if that's actually possible at all to use. But yeah, here we have the file to download version 2.8 in this case. 32 megabyte. Yeah. Made a mistake. We actually want to save the file. The PDF probably does not open it. Uh, go to Starter Valley. Really save. We'll just see while it downloads. If I mess something up, there's. Yeah, no, it doesn't look like it. it probably just error it out. Um, oh, this is not really for the stream. Okay, so um, yeah, Stardew Valley is at version 2.8 right now. We are waiting for version, I think it's version 3 that is supposed to have multiplayer. Multiplayer beta is actually already available here if you want to test it. It relies on the GOG Galaxy client <coughs> to um, do like uh, online multiplayer. Uh, so, and that one does not work in OpenBSD at least at this point, but uh, you can still do a LAN multiplayer. Um, so, uh, you can also use this version. There may be a little bit of tweaking needed, so I, I'm just going with the uh, main version at this point. So waiting for the download to finish. Oh, this is what happened. Okay. So, yeah. We're waiting for the download here to finish. Uh, unfortunately, Firefox <laughs> defaults to opening a .sh file with a new PDF, which doesn't make any sense to me. But yeah. Let's open um, um, FNIFI then. So here's the GitHub repo, actually this is the address. Um, it's still a work in progress, but it's a little tool created by me, which can be used to turn these games essentially into games that can be run on OpenBSD. But some of them rely on some libraries that you may need to install from ports typically. 
So uh, most of them should be the, the the script should tell you which ones are going to be needed, um, and uh, yeah, we have here the Adventures of Shaki Opossion, um, like, uh, Dust and Illusion Tale, Escape Code. Fez has some bugs at the moment. This may be related to the graphics stack. Actually, I'm, I'm not entirely sure about this. Um, haven't really got into troubleshoot this one, but Fez makes use of some advanced uh, uh, 3D functions of the Mesa driver, and since we are only on Mesa 13 at the moment on OpenBSD, that may be an issue. For example, you have to um, disable hardware instancing. Um, here we have Hacknet. Uh, Allboy, as mentioned before, Press X Not To Die is like an interactive movie of sorts. But uh, like really campy from what I've seen. I haven't really like played through it, but I confirm that it runs Rogue Legacy, Skulls of the Shogun, Stardew Valley, Towerfall, Ascension. Um, uh, Axiom Words is a little bit of a special case. And here's a link where you can get DRM free versions of the game so that you don't have to, typically don't have to worry about the um, Steam works libraries and working around them, so we're at 30% now, the download. So here's a list of the DRM free versions. Um, I'll try to update this if I hear that one of them isn't working, but um, yeah. Um, oh, Cryptarch, I forgot to mention Cryptarch, but Cryptarch works too, it's also a great game. Uh, yeah, there's a few that are a little buggy, like Flinthook, um, or River City Ransom Underground is also uh, one. Um, yeah. So what the script actually does while we're waiting for the download to finish. Let me just abbreviate this. Okay, I fast forwarded a little in the download. Let's see where we are. Okay, one, one two minutes left. Um, here's a list of FNA games from the person who ported them. Uh, yeah, here. Flubbity Jibaibo, I think that's how he pronounces it. And he has his, his own web page here, and you see ports, FNA, and this is where you can find all the FNA games. Oh, I forgot Celeste is also one of the FNA games. Also, it uses FMOD. So, um, uh, it can still run without sound. I might do another um, how-to for that later on. But yeah, here's a list of all FNA games. Some I've never got to work, like Nomoria. Um, but most of them do work on OpenBSD, significantly expanding our not too large game library on the platform. Okay, so we have about a minute left. Um, and let's see. Um, um, here is the GitHub repo of the FNA framework actually as it is used to convert XNA games to FNA. So all those games that have ports that use FNA, like the list we just looked at, um, they use this tool. And here's some information on the wiki if you're interested in actually using it to, for your game. But this is really more um, a vendor centric. Um, one of the things that FNA does is it um, bundles libraries that are users. So this is what um, we need the, the script for the FNAFI script. Uh, because um, those libraries have been compiled for Linux in this case, and they cannot run their binary incompatible with OpenBSD, so they cannot be used uh, by OpenBSD to launch the game. Um, and this is where we need uh, uh, an alternative. And actually what it does is it looks if the libraries are in the user local lib folder, the libraries that are needed. If not, it tells you which ones are needed, like libmototator or openal um, to actually run the game, or stl2. stl2 is used by all of them, I think. 
Okay, so the download is finished. Let's go to Stardew Valley. Let's see, we have the file here. It's a .sh file packaged with, I think it's called Mojo Installer, but you can just unzip them since we don't have, since the, the like this shell script does not run like this on OpenBSD. But you can just unzip the file and then we wait for this to unzip. You can see some of the, there's some DLL libraries here. Uh, okay, now it's just going through, okay. So we're done, okay. So let's log. Um, the game files typically in those gog.com games are in uh, data no arch game. So let's try that. Okay, let's see what we have here. You see, there's some uh, Galaxy DLL files, uh, but I th as far as I remember, they are not an issue in this case. You see here Stardew Valley, which is the launch script. So if you do look here, this is a launch script that ships with it that actually calls um, a binary that is just a portable version of Mono. Uh, and that then runs the .exe, like the executable, the, the uh, mono executable or like CIL uh, assembly. I think that's the technical term for it. You also have the lib folder. So let's see, lib64, see SCL2 and OpenAL are bundled here. As I said earlier, those do not work on OpenBSD because they've been compiled for Linux. So, but this is where the script comes in. So let's um, get everything ready to run Stardew Valley now. The script has been installed in uh, uh, FNAF or a subfolder in the home directory in my case. You can just, you can just um, uh, obtain it this way. I'm putting it as a comment so that it doesn't run, but you just do, um, github.com slash rfht slash unify and this gets you uh, the script and you run it like this and you pass as a parameter the name of the shell script at this point which in this case is starter valley and then it tells you what it does um, and it tells you that it's succeeded and that you should now be run be able to run the game this way so let's see it takes a moment to start up okay here we are you should be able to hear the sound of the birds in the game now Okay. okay, let's just start a new game here, my mm. fi on the my farm, everything is open BSD, cat person of course, and We'll randomize. Okay, nice. And let's go. Okay, so this is the, the intro. And we're not gonna watch the whole thing. Uh, you can do it on your own. Um, but this is essentially that it sets the, up the whole story that it's your granddad who leaves you a little farm and you're stuck in some desk job that seems kind of kind of a horrible company and you realize you need to get out and lead a different life and you remember that your dad had this farm and then you go there so let's just skip this and loads okay this is the bus that's taking us to Stardew Valley which is the little village that where the farm is at
Okay. Okay, let's just skip through this. We'll plant our first few crops and then leave it at that. This is primarily to show you that the game runs and it runs well. Note that it needs a data size of, uh, I think, two gigabyte for whatever reason, considering like that the graphics are not exactly high resolution. Um, but yeah, make sure you have data size set to at least two gigabyte. Um, this can be done in the, I think, login.conf, where you can set it through a shell, like the u limit command. I'll try to show you that in a moment. Okay, okay, so they're telling me a little bit. Okay, okay. Rustic, I know. Yeah. Oh, note that I am using Dwarf uh, keyboard layout, so <laughs> my motions are not going to be exactly uh, very fluid. When I used to play it more before, I switched to the regular keyboard layout whenever I started the game. C W A S D, but it uses there was set in the keyboard layout, so we go here. We can, uh, it's W, okay, yes, W. Okay, and here we have parsnip seeds. Okay, okay, you can reposition it. And see the weather report. Okay, uh, okay, let's go down. And right down. This is just me with the keyboard layout here. Remind me. Uh, here's the. Oh, and then we'll do this. Okay, and we got some stone here, pickaxe. Okay, okay, see it all works well. Um, you have some options here. Here's the map. Okay, but we're gonna have to quit desktop, and this is what it looks like when it's done. Um, let me show you, you can use the ulimic command to uh, change the size. You see the data size here is at 32 gigabyte right now, I think, which is the maximum as far as I know. But you can find it in here in man cave of the, the shell. And um, ulimit is here, and here you can see how you can change the um, data area size. You need at least two gigabyte for Stardew Valley there. Uh, and for those who don't believe me that this is uh, OpenBSD here, look, it's OpenBSD. Okay, well, thank you very much. <laughs>